What's going on? Welcome to No Brainer MMA. Going to be going over UFC Vegas 68, Derek Lewis versus Sergey Spivak. It was supposed to be in Seoul. I don't know why it, it was changed, but, you know, now it's just in good old Vegas. I'm um, going to get right into this. Duho Choi versus Kyle Nelson. And say what you want about Choi. The guy's on a three-fight losing streak, back-to-back -back KO losses. It wasn't looking too good. That was back in 2019. He took a couple of years off. But goddamn if you're not entertained when you watch this guy. His last five fights... All ended in performance of the night awards. He's got that throw caution to the wind, bite down on the mouthpiece fight style, which seems to be the trend for most Korean fighters we see, like the Korean zombie archetype. Uh, might not be the smartest approach, but you don't want to miss the fights when they're going off. He's been out for a little bit over three years due to injury, COVID, and then taking time off just to like improve after, after his losing skid. And for this training camp, he did some time working with Korean Zombie MMA alongside some of the biggest names in Korean MMA, like Chan Sung Jung and Kai Won Bin. Choi's fan-friendly fight style did rely on him taking a lot of damage. He averages 5.3 strikes per minute at 51% accuracy, but he absorbs 6.3 strikes per minute, resulting in a minus one striking differential. He's taken on Kyle Nelson, who has really struggled since joining the UFC. He joined the UFC with an 11-1 record, eight of those wins by fin by finish. He has since gone one and four since joining the UFC with three losses by KO. This is the part where I usually say some good attributes about, you know, Kyle Nelson. But besides a KO, like a flash KO 90 seconds back in 2019 against uh, Marco Polo Reyes, I think it was, he hasn't done much at all. But uh, I'm not impressed by your performance. He did show signs of life in his last time out against Jai Herbert, and even took the first round. And it was the second round he's ever won out of his 12 rounds he's fought in the UFC. So it was kind of a... I was like, I think if everyone watching, that was pretty surprised. But like Choi, he takes a lot of damage. He has a minus two striking differential, only 63% takedown, de takedown defense. But the biggest stat here is that uh, out of the three fights in the UFC that he's had that went the third round, he just slows down tremendously. In those three fights, he landed five strikes, two strikes, and seven strikes in the third round and just looks absolutely gassed in any round after the first. I think this fight is going to be old Choi. I think it's a great bounce back fight for him. And hopefully he's able to get back in the win column because, you know, he's a fun guy to watch. So I'm going to go with Duho Choi. And we're going to move right into the next one, which is Marcin Tibera versus Blagoj Ivanov. Ivanov, I salute him. I salute you, Ivanov. What he lacks, what he lacks in skill or physical prowess, he makes up for in toughness and heart. He was, this is the guy who once fought off eight attackers, got stabbed in the lung, spent so much time in the hospital, he dropped down to 190 pounds from like 265, and less than two years later, he made his debut in Bellator and went nine and one before joining the UFC. He's gone three and three since joining the UFC. Uh, had a pair of razor-thin split decision losses from Derek Lewis and Augusto Sakai before bouncing back against uh, Marcus Rogerio de Lima in his last time out. Ivanov's game is very well-rounded. He is great grappling, having a black belt in judo, master of sports and sambo, and he fights out of arguably one of the best grappling gyms, um, ironically, American Kickboxing Academy, and has trained with and alongside some of the best grapplers that have ever competed in the UFC, Daniel Cormier, Khabib, Islam Makhachev. But he also has technical kickboxing, although he does get outstruck a lot because he is undersized, standing at 5'11 with a 73-inch reach, which is kind of small for heavyweight. He's taken on Marcin Tibera, who's had a, just a great career comeback story. Uh, he was 1-4 in his last five leading into 2020, and since then he is 6-1 and one, and really shocked the world with a majority decision win over 16-0 unbeaten Moldovan fighter Alexander Rom Romanov in his last time out. And Romanov was a minus 375. I think he even bloated up to like a minus 420, something like that. And it ended up making the top 10 biggest upsets of 2022, coming in at number 10. I think that he is one of the more overlooked guys in the heavyweight division. He's out grappled Sergey Spivak. He KO'd Greg Hardy and Walt Harris, two super heavy hitters, and beat one of the biggest heavyweight prospects all since 2020. His striking looks clean, crisp. His gas tank is absolutely phenomenal. And if he takes you down, he makes it very hard for you to get back to your feet. He averages two, uh, he averages two minutes, 40 seconds per takedown 
during this six and one run. Blagoy's biggest advantage for his fights for the most part is that gas tank and his toughness, but Tibera has just as good, if not better cardio. And I think he just has the slight edge everywhere the fight goes. So I'm going to be more rocking with Marcin Tibera kind of like decision in that one. All right. We're going to move right into the next one. Daun Jung versus Devin Clark. Daun Jung, I think is a guy who has a lot of promise. He has a 4-1-1 record in the UFC with that lone loss coming in his last time out against Dustin Jacoby in a brutal first-round KO. He's had the same amount of fights canceled for him in the UFC as he does fights, which isn't the best look, right? Obviously, um, like the first thing you think of is like, oh, maybe this guy's scared, this guy's running. Uh, and more often than not, that is the reason. But Daun Jung's case, only one fight cancellation out of the six was from him. Jung's game is very unpredictable, but really works in his favor. Over his last three fights, he's come out and landed eight takedowns and had 12 minutes of control time against William Knight after not landing a takedown in his first three UFC fights. Cut to him knocking out an up-and-coming prospect, Kennedy and Chukwu, brutally in the first round. And that unpredictability creates a nightmare matchup for most guys. Devin Clark is a very good wrestler, and he's got some really great cardio to go along with it. And I think that has something to do with him training out of Elevation Fight Team. And frankly, nothing against the guy, but his fight style can be really boring when he's winning, which makes you kind of root against them. He's won 86% of his UFC fights by decision, but when he loses, he gets finished 86% of the time. Jung has the better striking here. And he is very good takedown defense, only getting taken down one time in six UFC fights. And I think Jung will take a sprawl and brawl approach for this one. When Clark lands one or less takedowns, he's two and six in the UFC. And when he lands two or more takedowns, he's five and one. So that's what I think it's going to come down to. And I think Jung's takedown defense will hold up. So I'm going to go with Daun Jung in that one. And we're going to move right into the main event, Derek Lewis versus Sergey Spivak. Derek Lewis is really at the lowest point he we've really ever seen him since joining the UFC back in 2014. He's two and three in his last five, all three losses by knockout, granted over some pretty tough guys, Sergey Pavlovich, Taitu Vasa, Cyril Gan. And apparently he's no longer part of Brendan Schaub's thick boy gang. Uh, he's like a skinny dude now. I don't think, I don't like admitting this, but I think the writing might be on the wall a little bit for uh, for Derek Lewis. He will always be a knockout threat. Don't get me wrong, but I think the best years are behind him in this. Um, he's getting knocked out by some of the hardest hitters in the UFC. But, uh, you know, he'll be sitting cage side next to Ronda Rousey. And, you know, I think that'll be all right for him. So. Ronda Rousey, fine ass. <laughs> Sergey Spivak is young has very strong wrestling base, averages four takedowns per fight at 63% accuracy. His stand-up has a lot of room for improvement, which is a nice way of saying it's bad, I guess. But he has one hell of a ground and pound, and that's usually how he gets those wins. Stylistically, this isn't a good matchup for Lewis, who has had a takedown defense sitting at around 55%, but has shown improvements over the course of his last five fights and hasn't been taken down, stuffing all four takedowns attempted on him in his last five. You just never know with Derek Lewis. One punch is all it takes for him. But maybe he's more of like a top 15 guy rather than a top, you know, five or seven, whatever he'll he'll be sitting at. Um, so I'm going to be going with Sergey Spivak. And the longer the fight goes, the better chance he has. Lewis and Cardio go together like oil and water. But you know what? He's making improvements. He's, you know changing his lifestyle he's training full-time for like the first time in his whole career and you could tell the guy looks downright trim but uh yeah sorry i'm gonna go with the younger guy sergey spivak and that's gonna be it ufc vegas 68 soul in vegas all right no brainer